Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, AK Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Uh, we've got another uh, fat electrician video. Um, it's kind of a short one, uh, but it's about ice cream, and I love ice cream. Um, eating a lot more of it these days since I don't drink anymore, but yeah, bam, I'll like it. Uh, weaponizing ice cream in World War II. Um, I can weaponize some ice cream. I don't know what that means, but I said it. All right, let's go. Oh, boy. <laughs> this video is going to be aggressive. Quack. Today we're talking about the biggest logistical flex of all time, the sheer amount of ice cream the U.S. military managed to eat in World War II. Buckle up, because it's going to get weird. Is it in a 1943, lot? the U.S. military <laughs> managed to eat 135 million pounds of ice cream. I don't know how you guys want to quantify that, like elephant meters or kill right. elephants. It's 10,384. Write that down. Moving on. Hey, real quick, this video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They've got over 30 retail locations across the U.S. and an even better online store. I've heard of Shields, but uh, we don't have them down here. Here in Arizona, but I've heard about them. Or that offers price matching and satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So if you need anything from camping gear to sporting goods to casual clothes to work clothes, make sure to go check out Shields in person. I will. Or we'll have their link in the description <laughs> down below. Back to the video. Why on earth was the American military eating so much ice cream? Couple of reasons. Reason number one, America, because America's always number one and we can. Buh! You're so dumb. America's not number one and the metric system's better. Buh. Okay, look, first of all, you're Buh. ruining my story. Second of all, I have no idea what the metric system's doing for you, but I do know... The metric system is, uh, is that the thing with the mayonnaise on it? No, wait, that's a sandwich. My bad. Sorry. Well, the only reason you're not doing is. it while speaking German <laughs> is because of America and fractions, so show some respect. As I was saying, reason number two, it's complicated. You see, it all started on January 17th, 1920, when the Ooh. 18th Amendment went into effect and America would begin the noble experiment, a.k.a. Ooh. prohibition, alcohols banned across all of the U.S. Because of this, pretty much overnight, all the bars in America turned oh, into... Yeah. Oh, yeah, they turned into ice cream shops. Uh, I don't know if that's where the ice cream sundae comes from, but, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Ice cream parlors rather than go out of business and ice cream stepped up to fill the social void left by alcohol. If you're not picking up on a put down, well. I'm trying to tell you that ice cream is essentially the new booze. And I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would the American government ban alcohol? It's the land of the free, the home of the brave, and now you can't even enjoy a beer. Women's suffrage movement that doesn't make any sense but apparently america had a severe drinking problem back then so the government had to step up and ban alcohol because was... they care about our health yeah <laughs> that's funny right and then to prove how much they cared about our health once people naturally started making their own booze at home using industrial alcohol they started mandating to all the manufacturers of industrial alcohol that they had to put methyl alcohol inside of it which is to, poisonous yeah, to, to people, kill people which as a result led to over 10,000 americans being poisoned to death during prohibition by their own government because the government wanted to make them healthy wink i'm from the government and <laughs> yeah, i well help. but at least well i kind of want to kill all of you you like booze there is a silver lining because prohibition is how we got nascar with a bunch of rednecks mm. hopping up their cars yep, so they could outrun true. cops and then naturally they wanted to see if they could outrun each other and bada bing bada boom nascar is born a lot of left turns anyways the point <laughs> of the you is the majority of the people that served in world war ii grew up in an era where their alcohol was ice cream meaning that they're going to do all the ridiculous shit that military members do for alcohol but they're going to do it for ice cream i mean during the korean war the cbs stole a train full hey. of booze go cbs I was in the CBs, by the way, in case any of you were wondering. Never got told this story in the CBs, though, but I kind of know why. And during World War II, <laughs> would have motivated us. when the USS Lexington, an aircraft carrier, got sank by two torpedoes, while the ship was sinking, the crew decided that it was very important that they raided the mess hall first to take all the ice cream mm -hmm. with them. They were literally sitting in life rafts eating ice cream out of their helmets. The crews for B-17 and B-24 bombers used to take ice cream mix, put it inside of ammo cans, and then stick it inside the ball turrets when they went on a bombing run. Okay. Because then if they made it back after successfully bombing the enemy the ball turret got cold enough and there was enough turbulence oh. that it would both chill and churn the ice cream so then they had fresh ice cream afterwards there were literally mobile ice cream factories that would follow the front line just behind it and deliver fresh ice cream to the front line every day That's pretty and then we get to the absolute pinnacle of logistical flexing the ice cream ships of world war ii yeah the navy had three of these things they could make 500 gallons of ice cream a day they had enough refrigerated 
needed storage to hold 2,000 gallons, and their entire job was to make ice cream and deliver it around the Pacific Theater. Now, to be fair, it's technically not a ship. It was a concrete barge. If you don't know the mm. difference, a barge doesn't move under its own power. It's basically got to be pulled around by tugboats. Also, when I say concrete barge, a lot of people seem to misinterpret it and think that it was a barge that was used for mixing concrete, and then they retrofitted it to make ice cream instead. That's not what happened. It's literally made out of concrete. During World War II, pretty much everything was being rationed, and the U.S. military experimented with making boats and barges out of concrete, like the USS. Yeah, didn't they try like Pike Creek or something like that too? I don't know. Quartz was completely made out of concrete. And then later, after they determined that the barges sucked, the U.S. Navy took three of them, spent a million dollars on each, retrofitted it into an ice cream factory. And not only is this the biggest logistical flex of all time, it very well may be the biggest morale changing factor ever. I mean, think about this. It is 1945, and I'm these thinking. guys are eating a frozen dairy treat 2,000 <laughs> miles. Just some ice cream with the boys, if you know what I mean. We're going to use some hot fudge. Oh, yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> from home, and the enemy is literally 15 miles from home, and they can't get food. Do you have any idea what effect it would have on your morale if you were the bad guy in World War II and you haven't eaten in three days, but it's okay because you have a superior warrior culture and your team's going to pull through and you're going to win. Because they got ice cream, though. Go team, you guys got this. And then the Americans come over the hill with flamethrowers and fucking ice cream cones. Maybe, just maybe, you're on the wrong side of this argument. That's like the star-spangled Darth Vader, okay? Ooh. Come to the red, white, and blue side. We've got fucking ice cream so in conclusion booze and ice cream are on the same level of awesome and next time you go out to a restaurant you see that little old man with the black hat on the front that says he's a veteran eating ice cream out of a little dish for dessert i do have one of those hats for iraq but uh i'd never wear it i think i wore it like a couple of times i was like yeah you know what's up thanks for watching best <laughs> way to support the channels go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com quack bang i will eventually out. Oh, no outro. Or well, there was an outro, but no uh, no little blooper at the end. All right, I get you. I see what you're doing. <laughs> All right, there you go. There's the uh, the ice cream. Um, yeah, I like ice cream. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Please uh, like you and subscribe you down below. Uh, makes me feel good inside. Um, and if you've got any suggestions, put them down in the comments. I do get to those uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, and bye.